We ask that all involved in these games may be kept free from injuries and that you will be with each of us as we recall. We pray this to you, Lord God Jesus Christ. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time when we stand and love our country. We remember the men and women who have served our currently serving to protect our freedom as we stand and love our flag with our national anthem.
But we do appreciate the fact that you join us right here from Great Falls, Montana. We apologize for the technical issues that we have had. But we are up and running now as we had a little power bump of some kind. But we are back and rolling in the right direction. So we do appreciate the fact you are with us. As we get it underway, it is the Eagles in front. They lead it here. 12 to 10 with 436 to go, and they have called timeout. So we'll take a quick little break, and we'll be right back. We'll work it out, and we'll have more for you right here from the NAIA. It is the first round, and, of course, it's Reinhardt taking on uh, Arizona Christian as it is the second game of the night. More to come in just a moment. the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. So many flavors of dew. I am thirsty. I must get the dew. Cut! Cut! He's hypnotized again! Do the dew. We are live from Great Falls, Montana. We appreciate the fact you join us. I'm Jim Starnes along with Chris Kelly. And Chris, we didn't have much of a pregame. We did have a glitch. And I'm not sure what happened, but all of a sudden things just went off. But uh, we're rolling now, and these two teams will match up very well, won't they? They really will. They come up as a number seven versus a number ten seed at large bid. I mean, this is really going to be a good battle. As they get back and forth, here's a three right wing. That shot is off the mark as the Eagles take the shot there and heading down the other way. Coming back the other way is going to be Arizona Christian. His shot is up and in. Nice take to the glass there as they get it inside. I like the way they play. They get up and down the court there. Very effective. Tied at 12 here as the firestorm from Arizona coming in. As we took a look at it, both teams uh, have traveled the ways, obviously. And uh, when you get Georgia involved in this, they're about 2,500 miles away or so. And they had to put on some miles. Combined, we're close to about 3,974 miles with all the teams that have come in here. So the Eagles bring it in. Reinhardt has the basketball tied at 12 as they take care of it. Williams, Ty Williams with the ball top of the key. Tony, we're thinking of you, and we'll talk about that coming up at halftime. But right now, we've got a tied game in this one as we go back and forth. As we roll back and forth on this one, here's a shot in the left wing. That's off the mark, no good. And they will bring it on the inbounds here. So inbounds pass, cross angle. As we are working on things, getting it set up here for you. As mentioned, we'd had kind of a little glitch. Here's a rebound and tough shot underneath. As, what is that, Till, I think, put that in. Almost Till, exactly. They're both doing a great job inside. So here they come back the other way now. 14-12, Firestorm in front. And the Eagles with the basketball. Taking care of it on that outside. Around the perimeter. We have seven to go on the shot clock. On that far baseline, top of the key now. Going to have to hurry. Shot top of the key is no good. Williams just really didn't get a very good look at it. That was a tough shot. Second in a row shot clock violation. That's tremendous defense by Arizona Christian. Arizona Christian with the stop. The Eagles lead it. Or excuse me, Firestone. Arizona Christian up two here, 14 to 12. Early, 2.47 to go. And we may take a quick break. If you lose the stream, we'll be right back with you as quick as we can. We just got to reset some stuff, I think, and see if we can't get it up and running here. But uh, we are appreciative that you are on board with us. As here's a dribble drive down to that right side. Still patient with the ball. Juke to the right, back around with a putback. That shot is off the mark, no good. Kraft continues to battle with it. 
or excuse me, that was Gunn. And now here comes the Eagles back the other way. Top of the key is Preston. Preston works around that left side. 2.14 to go. You knew these two teams would be good. They've been here for a while. Nice take to the glass. That was tough. I know Maria Sanchez Pouch, uh, she was out with some injuries for a while. She's back and she looks pretty tough there. You could tell that she's a team leader. She wants the ball and she wants to score. So she takes that one in, ties it at 14. As we come back the other way now, a minute and 50 seconds to go in the quarter. And dribble drive right hand side. Juke to the left, coming hard to the right. Step through move up off the glass. No good. Williams missed that one. They tie it up. Jump ball is going to go the other way. They will head down to the Firestorm side of things. Tied at 14. Williams batted herself for missing that Euro step. But same thing. She got stepped right through the defenders. I think she was surprised she was so wide open and missed the bunny. She missed that one, and we're still tied at 14. Was a huge crowd here a few moments ago. It has settled down just a little bit with two out-of-state teams playing. Here's a take to the glass. Up and in. Nice job. Lauren Gunn, the 5'7 sophomore, puts it in and makes it 16-14. to 14. A minute 18 to go. First quarter action. Round top of the key. Shot, stop, pop. Off the left side of the rim. No good. As Moon could not get that one to go. Georgia, when I talk to Coach Tony, and I'm going to try to get his interview up in, uh, for us here at halftime, but it was fun talking to him, and uh, he got in a car wreck, and he really wanted to be here. Matter of fact, the doctor says, no, you can't fly. He goes, what if I drive? And he says, well, no, you can't do that either. But uh, he really wants to be here, and if they go on to Iowa, he's going to head that direction. Here's a shot right wing. That's over the top. No good. Miss that. Gun missed it and rebounded by the Eagles as they come on the run. As Preston wants to push the action, left wing Williams, top the key. Spot three on the way, missed off the mark from Pounce. And official says, I didn't see it. I didn't get a good look. Official on the outside says, I got it. And with that said, here they come with the basketball. 35 seconds to go. And here they come, Firestone on the attack. Up by two, 16-14. Right wing, shot up and over the top. No good, missed that one. And with that miss, they will come back as Eagles try to force the action. Stop shooting, not making. On that left wing is Williams. And they get the rebound with 10 to go. Firestorm on the move here, up to 16-14. Behind the back dribble, step through, stop down on the baseline. Scoop shot, little contact, but no call. First quarter in the book, second quarter coming up. Stick around. Firestone lead it by two at the break. First quarter down, and we're back for second quarter action in a moment from the NAIA. It is the NAIA first and second round from Great Falls, Montana. Montana has one of the highest suicide rates in the United States. Suicide impacts people of all ages, genders, and ethnicities. On average, 300 Montanans die each year by suicide. Our best chance of stopping suicide is to stop the stigma. It's time to talk openly and honestly about mental health issues. Together, let's take the pledge to be allies against suicide. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. And that sign is to get a satisfying breakfast sandwich for just $2 when you order ahead on the app. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. We are ready for second quarter action. We appreciate your patience with us as you see the Montana flag there and uh, we get ready to cover the action coming your way. And on the inbounds, they will come with it. And here come the Eagles on the attack. As they work on that left side, back and back out. As Preston looks to get it inside the paint, back and deep in there. Nice job. Up and under is going to be Gibson. And she puts it in. I'm pretty impressed with that move. 
That was really a nice move. Christian came out with a different defense, a trapping zone. They've read it well and got a nice shot inside. Tied at 16, third tie of the contest. University of Providence waiting to play somebody at 5 o'clock tomorrow in the right to go to the final 16, the sweet 16, as they call it. Shot here is off the mark as Alvarez couldn't quite get that one to go. And it goes out of bounds. Kind of a token pressure here for uh, Arizona, I guess. But again, it's this trapping. It's a 1-2-2. Two, two. They want to trap out of this one every time. And here it comes. Well, here comes the press breaker. They get it across. And Woodruff will take care of that. Dribble drive. Shot is missed. And rebound taken out of there. Going the other way is Till. And Till now going down the other way. Brings it across that division line as they work it over into the hands of Alvarez. I like the way she handles the ball. She's quick with that left hand as she comes off and double teamed there. Step back, long two, off the irons, no good. And they fight for the rebound. Nice hustle. Chasing it down there is Kayla Clark. Heard a lot about her as she can shoot. Kayla Clark that time is not going to get it. And it goes out of bounds. You know, one of the things, Chris, is we talked about it, but uh, Coach Tony not being here on the sidelines is actually the athletic director. Jeff's over there, and uh, he says, I have never been on the sidelines except for the tournaments. He says, but I've watched him very close. Oh, well, that's good. And obviously making a defensive adjustment is a good coaching move when you're behind. So we'll see what, if that plays out for him. He seems like he understands the game of basketball, and uh, he's got his team rolling along here. Firestone coming back the other way. They're down by two. Come off this right-hand side. Lauren, a couple dribbles to the left. Double team. Now backs up for the 10-footer, and she's got it for two. Nice take to the glass there. She knocks that one down. And she'll hit that one for two. Now the Eagles coming back the other way. Eagles with the ball. Well, it looks like they lost it. I looked down just for a moment here. And here they come back the other way. Right wing shot is over the top, no good. Battle for the rebounds inside. The collision, Clyde, they'll keep it right here in the hands of the Firestorm. And they look to bring it on the inbounds. They do. 19 seconds to go on the shot clock. Around the corner, Alvarez has it. Long step back three. Shot a little long, front of the rim. And rebounder taken care of going the other way. Gibson wants to run with it. Nice pass through the key. Shot is blocked inside. Kraft couldn't get the shot away, and it was blocked. And Firestorm coming back the other way. You know, they do a good job of pushing it, but Clark needed to shoot it right away. She waited and allowed the defense to get down there and stop her. So they do go top of the key. No fouls called of as yet in the second quarter. Here's a takedown. Gun to the glass. And just when I said that, I go, there's going to be a foul. And I go, nope, she traveled with that. Gun does that. She really wants to make things happen. She wants to be creative. But sometimes I think her brain is going a little faster than her feet. And as they get the ball, they're going back into this two. It's a one, two, two defense. And they want to trap. But a nice press breaker gets it down again, an easy one. Put it up with the left hand this time was Kraft. That time she finished the shot a little faster. Eagles are going to stick with their man-to-man -man defense. And the offensive creator up on top is Alvarez. She gets a screen. Dump pass on the baseline. Reverse layup is beautiful. Good offensive play there. Give it two points for Hallie Payne. Here comes the Eagles as they cross midcourt again. The Eagles coming in number seven seed. Feeds the high post. Step through move with the left hand is productive by Gibson. That was a pretty nice move as she got up and under there and puts it off the glass. Back and forth, really not much of an advantage either way. It's been two points, and a foul, reaching foul is going to be called here. First foul of the quarter, and they're going to call that one. And that will be assessed against Julia Kraft, the senior from Canton, Georgia. That's 
some early news in. Oregon Tech knocked off Jessup University 79-72. That taking place down the road at Carroll. Wow, interesting. That's interesting. In our region, you have Carroll and us at the University of Providence, and then you have LC State not too far from here, and then the men are over at Montana Tech, which is about 180 miles from here. So this region very well represented in the NAIA playoffs as the shot was missed, and now Ty Williams coming the other way for the Eagles. Top of the key left wing as they work it around here. Kraft is a pretty smart player. I like the way she plays. She looks inside. She thinks about the three. Handles the ball pretty well as you see the take there. And a blocking foul will be called. 5.39 to go. And a quick update. The University of Providence won the first one as they won the first one in a hard-fought contest against Eastern Oregon. It was a third quarter late. They kind of got it going. They came out of the locker room. And when you talk about Salavea, Kiana Salavea, Kiana just played extremely well, 30-plus points in that. And uh, it was interesting because uh, the coach for Eastern Oregon, she talked about having to keep an eye and keep in check uh, Maldonado. Well, she did that. She just forgot about that other freshman that's pretty good. That other freshman inside had a 35-point game and was just grinning ear to ear afterwards. They came through the line here, and everybody gave him a high five as they head into Friday night. Who do they play? We're well, about to find out here. Here come the Firestone. Uh, Storm, Firestorm is down by three, and it is Clark, and there's a foul called. Had a chance to kind of get to talk to the Eagles a little bit from Reinhardt. And they're kind of a fun bunch. They, they were fun. And I asked them a lot about Georgia. And they go, we expected great big tall mountains and trees and all that. And I go, well, you're about 30 miles from that. And I says, you're within reach, so. That's it, exactly. You can see them. It was beautiful, but we're not right there. I told Coach, I said, why don't you take him up skiing? He said, I don't think so. <laughs> Showdown Montana, of course, is just about 30 miles from here. Uh, little belts up in that area. That's a good one. Boy, I tell you, the Eagles up one, 23-22. And they do have the basketball over to Williams at top of the key. Step back, 15-footer. Good. Nice shot there from Gibson. Tara, I asked her about her hair. She's got those braids on her hair. And she says it takes like half a day to do that. Oh, I believe it. That's incredible. They do that weave thing or something, whatever it is. And uh, I very politely asked her if I could touch it. And it's, it's, it's tight. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And uh, so uh, much time to do that. And I, I, it looks good on her, so that is good. 439 to go. Here is Clark. Now they got a steal and leading the pack. The referee was the only one open there. But he can't shoot. He never could. So there you go. Media timeout with 434 to go. Eagles up 25-22. We're back in a moment as we continue with the NAIA first round playoffs from the University of Province here in Great Falls. If you were on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. And that sign is to get a satisfying breakfast sandwich for just $2 when you order ahead on the app. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. You do see a few of the fans over there on the far sidelines in the reserve seats, and we welcome each and every fan here as they come and join us. We appreciate them. Also, we want to say thank you to our sponsors that allow us to be here. They include McDonald's of Great Falls with three locations to serve you. After the games, we're all headed to the stadium, Sports Bar and Casino. They are there. Northwest Energy, a brighter future for us. Street Burger is a great place to go for dessert, or if you want a good hearty meal, stop in at Street Burger on 10th Avenue South and thank you to Benefits, Orthopedic Center of Montana, all special sponsors bringing you the contest here for this one as we bring it. Coming back the other way, inbounds, it will be the uh, firestorm to get the ball, and uh, they are down by three, and foul is going to be called there. I almost had a thought they were going to let her go, but not quite, so. You know, she pulled her hands back really quick, like I'm not guilty at all, but that was a red flag. What? We're off. There was no advantage. We're okay. So they do call the foul inside, and I think that is against uh, Ponce. 
Maria Sanchez Ponce, I watched the game you guys played online, and she didn't play, and it was an excellent game down the I don't know if it was your final game or what, but it was kind of fun to watch. Firestorm had the ball as Till on that right wing. Little step three is good. Boom goes the dynamite. Roll ball puts it down with the trifecta. And just like that, we're tied at 25. A little slap at half court is going to cost you one. So Roy Ball will get assessed for the personal. <coughs> Coming into the contest for the Eagles is going to be number 22. And that's uh, Naya Moon, who played quite a bit. She's a pretty good ball handler. I was watching her in practice, and she really could have uh, pretty good speed on the ball, the way she handles that thing. Here's a take to the glass, step through, and shot. Floater no good off the mark there from Pounce. And Pounce couldn't get that one to go. Rebounded, coming back the other way. Gun, Lauren has it. Left wing, juke to the right, coming to the left, take to the glass, and hard crash. Boom, blocking the other call. And I don't know if in women's basketball, if that line or that quarter circle is still a factor. Uh, to my understanding, it is not. But uh, don't hold me to that. I do a lot more high school than I do college, so I hate to even say. I got a handful of officials over here. I'm going to ask one of them about that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're kind of talking about uh, the game and uh, the rules and the good calls. So, um, Taylor Teeple will go to the free throw line now. And we'll have a chance to shoot a couple. I think the biggest spread we've seen, Chris, is four points is all. That's been it exactly. Great battles inside at the post. Teeple and Till going up against Ponce. It's been a fun matchup. Free throw off the mark. We'll get another one here for Teeple. Tied at 25 from the McLaughlin Center here in Great Falls. NAIA action coming your way first and second round. Of course, tomorrow now we'll have one game to see who goes on and plays in Sioux City, Iowa, as they head there to be in the Sweet 16. I didn't have a Sweet 16 party. I'm just telling you. So. I don't know if I can remember when I was 16. <laughs> I'm sure I was in trouble. <laughs> Gibson... Gets it across the line. Left wing here now. Preston. Couple of dribbles. Backs it up. Back out top of the key. And a little juke and jive. Spin move. Nice drive to the glass here. Woodruff is loses out of bounds, but it said it was last touched by somebody else. I will try to get those coaches' interviews coming to you at halftime. I apologize again. We just had a glitch in the program. We may go off the air for a quick moment. We're going to reboot and see if we can't get it up and right for you. But in the meantime, here's a shot on that left wing. Missed there. And traveling is going to be called. So down the other way we go. Firestorm. We see them quite a little when we go to Phoenix for the Cactus Classic down there. So it's a pretty good time to see those teams and different talent around that we get to see. The Frontier Conference, if you've never been around it, is just brutal. Uh, we play each other three times. One of the top conferences in the nation, and they are just brutal. And just last year, we went to that tournament format, and it's a neutral site tournament for back. And I got to tell you, I really like the fact that we have that. And both years so far, we've had it here in Great Falls. And we do... I, well, I'm being arrogant. I'll say we do a fantastic job of hosting it, but it goes on smoothly. It's a well-run tournament. Back-to-back, -back, both the boys and the girls playing the tournament, and you're going to see some fantastic basketball. It was well attended again this year, and thank you, by the way, because I'm uh, a part of that, getting to put that together, and Doug Hashley and our SID and, of course, uh, our uh, events manager, uh, our faculty, uh, everybody helps out there, and so our athletic department does a tremendous job putting that together, and I appreciate that, Chris. Chris is always there broadcasting it, so uh, it's always good. So as we get to the free throw line, another one coming up here for Alvarez. Firestorm leads it 27-25 with 3.01 to go until halftime. And that shot is good, too. Makes it a three-point lead. As a token pressure comes up here, and the Eagles will break it across the timeline. Cross angle here as they go on this left-hand side. Gibson lobs it inside. Fade away. 14-footer left wing. No good. Woodruff couldn't get that one to go. And they'll come back down the other way. Long shot out top of the key. Bounces around. Volley's up and down a couple times. 
kind of like the old paddle boards when you kept hitting the ball up there. <laughs> and pass down on that baseline cross angle here. Three pointer on the way is Simpson and couldn't get that one to go. Battle for the rebound. When I talked to Coach Campbell earlier today, he was telling me about his team. And he says, we're scrappy. Yes, you are. It is fun to see that. Yeah, they are very athletic and very scrappy, and they're not going to back off for nothing. They are a scrappy team, to say the least. And now they're looking to see what they should do with the ball. As mentioned at halftime, you may have to reconnect, and I do apologize on the Facebook side of things. We're going to kind of reset and see if we can't get it to go. We did have a little glitch for some reason. But with that said, we do have basketball right now. Right wing, back step, three on the way. Boom, outside. Little bingo there for Woodruff as she knocks that one down. And just about the time you think you're going to get the advantage and head into the lead by a certain margin, a three will tie it up again. Split the defense, and a travel will be called here. A little hesitation from Lauren that time. You know, it's a nice job. The balance scoring on both of these teams, I think, has made it a little difficult for coaches to decide what to do. It's not like one player is just lighting it up. They're really getting contributions from all 10 players on the court. Back and forth they go. So with that said, under two minutes to go in this quarter. First half action, knotted at 28. We've been tied a couple of times. And it's fun. Uh, the head coach over there, Rusty Rogers, in his fifth year, been around a number of years, is just calm and collected. He kind of takes it all in. This is tipped out of bounds, and they say, let's give it to the firestorm here from Arizona Christian. Jeff might be an AD, but he looks like a coach over there. He's giving the official, uh, asking some questions. Let's just put it that way. He says, did you see that? <laughs> he, he was a fun guy to talk to. I really do enjoy talking to him as they got here early and uh, had a chance to see Great Falls a little bit. So here comes the firestorm as a drive down to the basket from Henry. Does that reverse layup. She's way over the top. And then out of the hands. And going the other way, Emily Till hit it last. And they will head down the other way. You know, I'm surprised. You get from Georgia. You, you've traveled a little bit. They got a little crowd over there. Oh, is that, are those? I didn't know if those were university fans that stuck by, or those are Georgia fans, huh? They are a couple of them over there, as Gibson does a nice little spin move here and puts it in. A good take to the glass there. And coming back. The other way now, coach wanted a carry, and they said, nope, didn't happen. So now they do get it in the hands of Emily Till and a steal. Here comes the Eagles back the other way. Preston dishes it off, and they go back out top key. Stop shot up is Gibson no good. Good hustle on the rebound. Eagles keep it alive here with 33 seconds to go until halftime. As they come over to this right-hand side, left wing now. There's about 12 seconds, different shot clock to game clock. Down to eight to go on the shot clock. Off the right wing, almost a loss there. They keep it alive. Four to go. Going to have to hurry here. Take to the glass, shot up. Good. Nice take to the glass there from Woodruff. Ashley puts it in. 32, 28, Eagles in front. Eight seconds to go. Down the other way. Here they come with the dribble. Step back three is no good. And there's the buzzer. Lauren Green with the shot at the buzzer, and it is no good. They will head to the locker room, and as you see, the Eagles lead at 32-28. to 28. Again, we are going to step off the air. Please reconnect as we'll step off and get it reconnected and see if we can't get things rocking and rolling for you in just a moment. As we are halftime, and the Eagles lead at 32-28 to 28 right here in the University of Providence, Argo Sports Network. For more than 85 years, DA Davidson has strived to build relationships and trust from our first office in Montana to each of our 70 locations spread out coast to coast. We're on the ground and in your neighborhood, combining the values of a local partner with the capabilities of a national institution. We achieve strong outcomes based on mutual success. 
planning for future generations, and building legacies that endure together. Are you ready to unleash your awesome? Then you need 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS. You'll have the powerful internet you need to stream, game, learn, and work today, and be prepared to take on anything new you can dream up tomorrow. Imagine internet you'll never outgrow. Get 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS and embrace infinite possibility. Thanks, Randy. <laughs> oh, gosh. We do appreciate the fact you join us right here from the McLaughlin Gymnasium in Great Falls, Montana. I'm Jim Sarge along with Chris Kelly. And, uh, and thank you for sticking with us because we did have a technical issue. We don't know what happened, if it was a power bump or what, but it looks like we got things back up and running. Coach, let's talk a little bit about that first half. And uh, neither team really got any type of uh, expansion of any kind, any kind of distance between the two. And uh, uh, both teams are very evenly matched. I like the fact that when Coach talked about how hard his team plays, for the Eagles, they do. Reinhardt does play. They're scrappy, and yeah. they play hard, don't they? Well, they came out in the first two minutes of the game and busted open to a 7 nothing lead, and I was sitting here going, whoa, what kind of game is this going to be? Well, then finally, Arizona got back into a rhythm with a 5-2 run of their own and got back to within close, and now it's been really evenly matched throughout. But the big stat that jumps out, as good as Reinhardt was doing in the first quarter, they were 0% from the free throw line, 0 for 11. And you can shoot lights out the rest of the game, and your shooting percentage is still not going to be very good. You definitely got to do well at the charity stripe, and you also got to hit some threes out there and uh, to open it up from inside. We are going to take a chance and see if we can't get the coaches on there. We missed it in the first half, but we want to have a chance to have both coaches talk to you. And as mentioned, Jeff is the head coach coach for this one is he is the AD at Reinhardt and because of coach Tony Campbell his accident he is home watching this on his computer and here's what Tony or excuse me here's what Jeff had to say uh, about this game well we continue our conversation with the Reinhardt team and here is the assistant coach head coach and Jeff I'm going to give you a chance to explain that because coach Tony would love to be here but uh, he got in an accident uh, hopefully he's doing okay yeah, yeah. Coach Campbell, our uh, head coach, uh, he got an accident a couple weeks ago, and he just got out of the hospital on Tuesday. He's doing much, much better. Unfortunately, he can't be here. Um, would love him to be here, and I know he wants to be here, um, and, and the girls will be here, ladies will be fighting for him uh, yeah. to be here. So, yeah. And we wish him the very best of luck, of course, and we know he's watching. But uh, let's talk about this team a little bit. It's not like you're new to it. You've been on the sidelines. You've watched it all develop. Uh, tell us about your team because you guys are off to a great start. I think you were undefeated for a while, and then you lost a couple games. Uh, yeah, so I, I have actually not been on the bench uh, at all until the conference tournament when I started to help out when Coach Tony got in a wreck. But I have watched them from afar and, and, and home games and things like that. And, and they're, they're a very uh, passionate uh, defensive rebounding bunch of ladies that like to get after it and love playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is exciting, isn't it? And you and I stay with this because those kids just keep us young, don't they? Oh, yeah, they definitely do. And, and being in athletics for almost 20-something years now, that definitely does keep you young and um, energized. So, Tell us about your university a little bit. Obviously, you guys get the furthest travel award because you, you traveled quite a ways, didn't you? Yes, we did. We we're located uh, just north of uh, Kennesaw. Um, which is in Georgia, which is just north of Atlanta. So we're about 50 miles north of Atlanta, yeah. uh, roughly speaking, in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and we're a small liberal arts uh, Methodist school that, um, you know, had 24 sports teams and 
and really that's that's kind of us right there yeah which is exciting uh, baseball all the lacrosse all that stuff that that is good uh so what do you know uh, first time to montana or have you been here before i've never been to montana before um our women's basketball team has been in montana but um a couple years ago they came out here to rocky mountain but i have not been to montana so it's uh it's a different place than than georgia is so yeah. Thoughts so far? Has it been good to you? Yeah, it's been great. The hosts, you guys have been phenomenal. Take care of our team and things like that with the uh, preparation of getting here and, and goodie baskets when we got here. So all those things have been great. Uh, just looking forward to playing. You have been thrown into the fire of sorts, and uh, you had to do a lot of film watching and stuff like that with Arizona Christian. What do you know about them, and what do you do to win? Um, defense and rebounding. I don't have to watch film. It's just defense and rebound. That's how you win basketball games, uh, and that's Coach Campbell's philosophy. If we play defense and we rebound and execute on offensive end, uh, we should be in the game at the end. Fantastic. Thanks for coming here. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Good luck. Yeah, and he will be on the sidelines. And again, Coach uh, Campbell, we are thinking of you, of course, uh, as these kids do very well in this contest. We wish them the very best of luck. The tip-off is just around the corner. We've got you covered right here in the University of Providence Argo Sports Network. Well, as we talked about, that one obviously was recorded prior to uh, this halftime. And uh, thank you for Jeff for stepping in and uh, talking with us on that. I do want to give you a chance and see what uh, Rusty had to say as we got into a conversation with him about his basketball team. Hey, it is game number two of the NAIA going on here at the University of Providence, and we have a chance to catch up to the head coach for Arizona Christian. Rusty, let's talk about your team a little bit. Uh, give us some background and how your season's been going. Well, it's been a kind of up and down season for us this season, uh, you know, predicated pretty much on our health. So uh, we've had some injuries throughout the course of the year. And uh, when we're all healthy, we can be pretty tough. So uh, coming into the tournament, uh, we're, we're pretty healthy, as good as we've been all season. So I'm looking forward to this. You play Reinhardt, a team you haven't uh, matched up against before. What do you know about them? Very athletic. Uh, they know how to win by virtue of their 26 and three record. So uh, and that doesn't. That should not be understated. I mean, you got girls that know how to win, how to pull games out. Um, you know, that's something that you can't really practice for. So we've got to be ready for them. Um, you know, we, we're going to try to control the tempo of the game. We feel like that's our best way to. Well, there you have it. You had a chance to hear those guys talk and uh, how the event went with each coaches. And uh, it's kind of cool uh, to talk to those guys with different conferences and then just see how they compare to what we're doing. You know, that's it exactly. We do tend to survive in our own little universe up here. We, you know, you worry about Carroll and you worry about Tech and all these other schools. Now, all of a sudden, this big universe has opened up for you with different playing styles, different sets of athletes and you're having to make some quick coaching adjustments on the move. It is halftime. We are going to take a quick little break, and we'll come back with more in just a moment. It's a good one as the Eagles lead at 32 to 28, where you turn right here to the University of Providence as we get ready for second half in game number two of the first round of the NAIA championship, the 43rd annual championship right here from Great Falls. Thanks to the Stadium Sports Bar and Casino, we were able to bring Todd Hutchings to Montana. Come check out their arcade games for the kids and their new casino. With delicious food, it is the best sports bar in Montana. They are located in Great Falls at 1121 Fifth Street South. Come check them out. the best burgers, fries, beers, and milkshakes. Street Burgers is where you need to be. And if it's your birthday, well, do they have a treat for you. A free birthday shake. Just sign up for their rewards program and get a free birthday shake during your birthday month. You'll also get 50 points just for signing up. So get over to streetburgers.net to sign up or stop in and see them today. And don't forget, it's always free local delivery of food and beer. 
And when you get their Montana sourced made with love burgers, fries, and shakes, you're sure to have a happy belly. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles, bubbly sparkling water. It's fourth down, seconds on the clock. He hands it off, finds a hole in the middle. Oh, Brian, 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 Brian moves! A touchdown for the win. I can't believe it! Pizza, better with Pepsi. <sighs> all right, here we go. We do want to say thank you for joining us here for the 30th, uh, 43rd, 43rd anniversary of this NAIA playoff. And it's cool that we get to host it here in a great fall at the McLaughlin Center, the home of the University of Providence. And uh, we welcome in all schools, of course, for this. And as we talked about, Chris, the right to go to Sioux City, Iowa. You know, that's it. A lot of schools, they don't have the opportunity to play for nationals maybe once or twice in their careers. And to get a chance to advance in the tournament is even bigger. And with that said, we get the second half underway as the Eagles lead at 32-28. Firestone coming the other way. Eagles will get the rebound, and they'll take off with it going the other direction. And they want to run with it. Quick left shot there is Kraft, and her shot no good. And picking up the rebound. Now the Firestorm want to run with it. His gun going the other way. Takes it to the baseline. Puts up the shot. Over the top, no good. Miss that one. Rebounded. And we're off to the races as Pounce will go back the other way. Pounce gets rid of it, but he traveled with it. And that will be a turnover as they'll come back the other way. Turnover's really not an issue in the first half for either squad, but they're seeing if they can catch up here in the second half. So here they come uh, on the offense, very patient here as they walk it up the floor. Firestorm from Arizona Christian with a dribble drive. Dip and a shot is up and in. Nice little touch there as they go in. Alvarez, Alyssa takes it in there. She's a guard at 5'11". From Scottsdale, Arizona, and I like that place. We've been there a couple of times as we talk about going there for the Cactus Classic each year. Uh, Coach Bill has kind of gotten away from that the last couple of years, has uh, had a chance to go to Hawaii the last few years. Two years ago, we were on the airplane to go with him to Hawaii, and the pilot came on and says, 10 minutes, 10 minutes max, we'll have this thing fixed. 30 minutes max. We're back and we go around and we're back at the docks and they go, uh, you're done. Oh, no. <laughs> Seven people got to go to uh, Hawaii and two coaches. And I said, Sue and I were going. I go, no, we're going to give the kids our seats. And no, we're not going. And eventually they got them all there on different planes. So, so that's kind of cool that they do that. As we come down, a shot at one in. Now come back. Five points. That might be the, the biggest lead so far of the contest. Eagles up five. A oh. travel here. We've seen a few of those travels yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you love it. There's athletes on both of these squads that love to create. They're trying to be innovative. But sometimes, like you said, the brain's going a little faster in the body, and the sink causes a turnover. So a turnover there as Firestorm will walk it up as they do get into the hands of Alvarez, who runs the point position here for this team. At the 8.06 mark of the third quarter, she is going to fire one, and pretty confident shot right there. You can kind of see why she was sorely missed in that championship game. Step back three to bring him back within two. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's a 15-footer. <coughs> That's good from outside as Gibson nails that one. Yeah, Gibson's having a nice game, 12 points. They've really kind of shut down Ponce with her offensive production, and Gibson has stepped up and taken it over. Really has. Now there's a foul called at the other end. 37-33 here. I was looking at the final polls of the season with the coaches' polls. Marion has been right there, 1-2-3, you know, all season long. Well, they're back in first from Indiana. And then that Iowa team that uh, you were talking about, they flip back and forth. So there are going to be some pretty good teams here in that uh, big uh, tournament coming up, Sweet 16 in Iowa. And as I mentioned that, Carroll is still at six, and the University of Providence, of course, in there as well at the 14 spot. And if memory recalls right, and I think it does, yeah. UP beat Carroll in the championship. Yes, they did. They by beat him by 20 12, once. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah it was, uh, I think it was 12 season. in that one, but the regular season it was at 20. Right. So, yeah, 
I had to look up that Dort. I was not familiar with them at all. Oh, really? Not yeah. at all. No. Yeah, and there's quite a few little teams like that, you know. And and when I talked about with hosting uh, some of these first and second rounds, uh, Lewis Clark is in there. They're 11th. They've been as high as six. Yeah. So they're pretty competitive. And you always look at that and kind of wonder about who's who, you know, in the top 20 there. So that, that's pretty cool. It's a fun tournament to go to if you ever get to go. So I'm sure they're going to ask me to go. We, we should broadcast it. You we should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A loose ball here gets tipped out of bounds. Well, the Eagles will turn it over there up by two now. Potts will go over and chase it down in the corner. Yeah, I was talking to the officials over here, and uh, I was getting some clarification. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I do get a little embarrassed. I know high yeah. school ball, like I told you. I'll tell you anything there. Yeah. But collegiate, I'm just not as involved anymore. I remember, and, and I'm 62, so I'm just going to tell you, I, it was a while ago. But uh, there was no 10 seconds for the women in the backcourt as Poss goes in and just shows her strength up and in. Yeah. Nice job there. That's what I was saying. Alvarez, that's what she likes. The more pressure, yeah. she's more likely to put it in. She likes to create. Tied it now at 37. Stop and pop right wing. Bingo! Outside from Julia Kraft. As knocking that one down. But I was going to say there's no 10 seconds in women. That came back about five or six years ago. Oh. I'm told by the guys over here. And then no uh, quarter circle or the, uh, the in the lane circle. The defensive circle. The defensive okay. circle right. for women, but it's still there for guys, the men. So here's a three on the outside. That shot no good. They fight for the rebounds, and Firestorm keep it alive. Here's a little step back 10-footer. No, couldn't get that one to go. And rebounder taking care of there. Gibson with the control. And Eagles coming back the other way, up by three. <coughs> Back top the key was 6.07 to go here in our contest of the third quarter. Step back, loose ball. You bring it in there. It's dangerous. And they keep it going here. Kick the right side. Step right. Come with a left-handed dribble. Shot rolls around no good. Couldn't quite get that one to go. Wood would have a pretty good look at it. Now they fight for the rebound. And Scrappy is right. Yeah, the Eagles yeah. are Scrappy. No, this, these are both athletic squads. But what I see from uh, Reinhardt, Again, it's just that ability to get your nose in there, make some things happen, especially on defense. Gibson hesitates at getting off the floor a little bit. And looks like she will go to the sidelines. Yeah, her and Till inside have been fun. They've really been pushing each other. Our trainer here at the University of Providence is taking care of both teams, and she's giving a look there, and Gibson just kind of shaking it off. So we're ready to play again as Firestorm come the other way. Arizona Christian with Pounce with the ball, direct in traffic. And we'll hand it off here. Till works around, splits the defense, takes it up, jumps on the defender, basket counts. That's going to be a block. A tough block because the defender was just kind of turning to get out of the way and got landed on. Well, Till, she, they list her at six foot, but she's one of those players that plays much bigger than six foot. She's confident in a variety of skills. I haven't really seen her shoot it up from the outside, but she's a good ball handler and a good decision maker. And she goes to the free throw line with the made basket and a chance to tie it up here again as she goes to that charity stripe. And the shot is up and no, off the iron's no good. She misses that one. And they fight for the rebound there. And that's the other thing, defensively, she's matched up against Ponce and has held her to nine points. Yeah, and Till has six points there on the miss, but they will give the ball back to Arizona Christian on the inbounds. And Gunn comes on that baseline, scoops, puts it up, shot it a little bit short that time, and that's going to be a foul coming in from behind. They're going to call that one on Till. Yeah, Gunn plays a lot like Alvarez, likes that direct drive to the basket. She sat a little bit in the second quarter with back-to-back -back fouls, but now she's been back. So they will have to bring it up against full court press with 5.22 to go. In our third quarter, here comes the Eagles with the basketball still in the backcourt. And now they will pass it forward. Looking, waiting for somebody to open up in that paint as they get the dribble drive in. You see these kids so much now with that quick step, and they yeah. can get around those defenders so fast. As out top, directing traffic is Williams. She'll back it up, looking. Four to go. Going to have to step through, force a shot, rolls it around, missed it, and right there to get it is Till. She goes above everybody, down ahead of the pack, easy layup at the other end is Robo. Garcia hits that one, 
And makes it 41-40 and a foul in the backcourt. Yeah, huge run right now here by Reinhardt to get back within one. Emily might have picked up her second foul right there. Emily Till. And a timeout is going to be called. Under five-minute timeout with 4.39 to go. Firestorm lead it 41-40. We're back in a moment on the University of Providence Argo Sports Network. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles, bubbly, sparkling water. It's fourth down, seconds on the clock. He hands it off, finds a hole in the middle. Oh, 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 Not the Brian Brian moves. A touchdown. Oh, I can't believe it. Pizza, better with Pepsi. Thanks to the Stadium Sports Bar and Casino, we were able to bring Todd Hutchings to Montana. Come check out their arcade games for the kids and their new casino. With delicious food, it is the best sports bar in Montana. They are located in Great Falls at 1121 5th Street South. Come check them out. Let's get back to basketball here on a Friday night as we head to the 8 o'clock hour and the Firestorm lead at 41 to 40. The Eagles with the basketball now and they will work it around the perimeter out top of the key around that far side. Here's a three in the right wing. That's going to be off the mark. Couldn't quite get that one to go and we're on the run going the other way. Let everybody fly by and put it up and in off the glass as Gunn nails that one and makes it a three-point contest, 43-40. Firestorm in front at the four-minute mark here of our third quarter. We do appreciate you. Sarge here and Chris Kelly bringing you the play-by-play -play courtside. We'll be here again tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. And knock on word, everything will be perfect. Nice shot here. Three in the wing is good. A little unorthodox shooting style, but if it goes in, who's going to argue? Exactly. From the hip, she shot that one up and in and knocks it down. Hey, guess what? We're tied again. That might surprise you. Here's a take, Till loses it, got it tapped away, and then loses it again. Fight, scrum in the middle, now they're going to battle for it. Still loose, finally coming out of it, and here come the Eagles. They're going to run with it. Left-hand side, stop, and oh, yeah. she traveled. Yeah. They are so fast, they can't keep up with their feet. That's it. That's, that, that's it, really yeah. it. No, that's it, exactly. The mind is going a million miles an hour, and they're so athletic and so fast that just sometimes it doesn't match up. Yeah, and it just kind of lost it there. Tied at 43, University of Providence. The Argos won earlier by 10 as they beat Eastern Oregon in a good game back and forth. That one really went well. And they will take on the winner of this one, which I see those two teams matching up, either of those two teams matching up pretty well tomorrow night in what is kind of called the championship, but not really because it's just an advancement where you get to go on to the Sweet 16. So it's hard to call it a tournament. It's hard to call it a championship, but it's, the second day of the tournament. <laughs> Here's a take to the glass. Lost it there. Is taking it in with people. And now the Eagles want to run with it. Take to the glass. Ooh, that's oh, going to be an offensive charge. Oh, that's her third. That is going to be a charge coming down there as Ponce will be credited with that. And I with think, that yeah. said, I think that's her third. Yeah, it is. And that, I think that was a good call. Coach Jeff is arguing a little bit, and that's his job. But I think it was a good call. So they did call the charge there. Yeah. And yeah. Looks, You've got to send her to the bench. You can't yep. let her get her fourth foul here in yep. the third quarter. Person that's coached in these level of games, or not quite this level, but right. big games. Yeah. You knew that. Yeah, you got to get them over there. You still have a fourth quarter to go, yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. And you're tied. I, I think you can leave her out and you can get down five maybe. And I, I don't know if you want to go more than that, but I think this team will stay with them here. Here's a lob, and that's going to go way out of bounds. Sails out of bounds. Well, Martinez checks in, one of the few athletes that is not from Georgia on this squad. She's from Cordoba, Spain. Spain, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, um, is it two years ago? Three years ago. I can't remember when we went to Spain. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that was I pretty cool. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Tied at 43. Nobody has scored in a while. 2.50 to go here in our third quarter. As the Eagles just taking their time. Left-hand side. Preston gets rid of it. And, yeah, I was going to say one official didn't see it, but the far one did, so there was a touch. And when you get a chance to look back at it, because we're allowed 10 seconds behind, they go, no, no, we got a touch. So Eagles will get it back here. 12-10 to go on the shot side. Nine now, eight. As they come around, Preston on this right-hand side. Right wing, three on the way. In and oh. out, in and out. Good. Nice shot there as Moon hits it. You know, she's only a freshman, and she's 5'3". Well, she's, she's got a little bit of a circular orbit shot. I was worried it was going to rim out, but she sweet-talked it down. Yeah. Two officials made the call on the far side. I always laugh at that because you go, well, who's watching this? <laughs> Everybody's watching her. Uh, and I've been there, I'm just telling you. I've never, well, I did. I, I officiated college basketball when Lauren B uh, Baker was in, uh, oh, yeah. in Haver. Yeah. He had us come up and do some alumni games and stuff, and uh, it, it was interesting, so. No, I teach it. That means I can't do it. Yeah. I've tried. I've just, I'm, yeah. I'm not good, and I'll ad yeah. proudly admit it. You do a great job teaching. I, I, I stand outside your uh, uh, your classroom, yeah. and I listen <laughs> to something, because you're talking sports, so I yeah. listen to something yeah. you're talking about. I go, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's fun, so 46-44. Man, this one's going to go to the wire. I would not leave. This is going to no. go right down to the wire. So they do get it on the inbounds, and they come down the other way. Here come the Eagles, up by a deuce. That 5-3 freshman is going to take another shot at it. Missed that one, but the backside rebound is picked up by Woodruff. Here's a take to the glass, and good no call there. Rebounded underneath. They'll kick it back out around. Back out, top of the key, 10 to go on the shot clock. As they back it up here, Moon takes the shot. Bingo! Nope, it's only going to be a two. Long distance two, she gets there. And hits that one down, makes it 48-44. There's a good defensive stand. Here come the Eagles the other way. Attacking the glass is Woodruff. Up, off the glass, bingo! She's got it. Great job by Woodruff, pushing the ball up ahead of her and getting down the court. Foul is going to be called here. And we may be shooting some free throws here. I just want to make sure. Well, they are going to call that against Preston. Preston, yeah, picking it up. So number two gets her second. And down they go the other way. We go to the free throw line, and Clark will have a chance to shoot there. It's interesting uh, being involved in hosting this the behind the scenes things that you do oh. uh, from taking care of the officials to the teams, to the rooms, to the meals, all that stuff. And the paperwork is unbelievable. I bet, I bet. <laughs> just because yeah. the conference has to assure uh, credibility and yeah. fairness across the board. So they've got to make sure you do certain yeah. things. And hats off to Doug and uh, our, the athletic staff because they all work together. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here, but uh, they, it, they oh, started yeah. from, uh, uh, you know, Coach Bill involved in it, of course, and you got to, make your proposals and you pay your money and all that stuff so uh oh look at this now that might be a foul and oh that's 10 okay yeah i kind of thought that was going to be preston the way was. she looked yeah, yeah i thought so too the way she spun around and looked there but no it wasn't and so preston will get the ball preston's uh, got something wrong with her shoe and that's driving me nuts yeah <laughs> Beautiful drive and nice dish into the post player, puts it up, and that's off the mark, gets a rebound, put back, off as well. So three tries, cuts him down short. Defensive stop here for the Firestorm. And they'll come down the other way. That was Martinez down there. And now kind of a loose ball here, and yeah. coach calls timeout. He hey. wants a timeout before he loses it. Yeah. yeah. So he wants a timeout. That gives us 30 seconds to say thank you to our wonderful sponsors that allow us to be here. It is 50-46, Eagles in front. We're back in half a minute right here at the University of Providence Argo Sports Network.
Yeah, I should have told him, but. <laughs> A minute five to go, third quarter action. It is 50 to 46. The Eagles have the basketball, they have the lead, and they're on the attack. Here they come as they take it to the basket. Cross angle, top of the key, three on the way. And that shot is rolling around no good as Boone couldn't get that one to fall. And rebounded nicely coming out the other way is Clark. Clark brings it to the division line and 43 seconds to go. And tied up. That's enough for a jump ball. And the Eagles will get it back. I'm trying to think in my mind, my limited vocabulary, what guy can others say than scrappy, but the Eagles are yes, scrappy. They are scrappy, yeah. absolutely. Aggressive, because maybe? The issue in this second half is they're, they're really, you hate to say it, but they're taking too many threes. They're taking the shot too early in their offensive series, not getting an opportunity for something to happen inside, and I'm guessing that's just because Ponce is on the bench. And she has been there a while. But they just brought Simpson back in, so there's another force inside. So they do have about a 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. They'll back up, take that three again. This time in and out, no good. Shot is off the mark from Woodruff. They battle for the rebounds, but it is going to be Firestorm on the attack. Arizona Christian coming to the offense. Clark will bring it and hand it off here to Henry, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Nice job. Is that Woodruff over there? It I was. Think, yeah, yep. staying at home and letting him run into her. Yeah, took the hit there. Kind of looking at them, Coach, and you see both of them. I mean, these teams are similar in size. There's no real no, powerhouse like no. Kiana was for the University of Providence. Wasn't until uh, Martinez came in that they had anyone over six foot. Here is a desperation three at the buzzer. It's no good. They will head to the sidelines once again. That exciting fourth quarter is coming up next. Eagles lead at 50 to 46 right here in the University of Providence Argo Sports Network. <laughs> Stadium Sports Bar and Casino, we were able to bring Todd Hutchings to Montana. Come check out their arcade games for the kids and their new casino. With delicious food, it is the best sports bar in Montana. They are located in Great Falls at 1121 Fifth Street South. Come check them out. If you are on the fence about ordering McDonald's, consider this a sign. And that sign is to get a satisfying breakfast sandwich for just $2 when you order ahead on the app. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. You are watching the University of Providence broadcast with game number two of the NAIA first and second round coming your way. And this is the second half of our doubleheader with Arizona Christian battling out with Reinhardt. And here we go, fourth quarter action coming up as it is going to be the Firestorm down by four. But they do have the basketball to start it, and number 20 is back in. And that is definitely their go-to person. We'll see how it pans out here with uh, Alvarez on the attack. And there's a shot in there, nice up and in. And back the other way, here come the Eagles now. And they'll come off this right-hand side, cross angle pass left wing now, as Kraft has it, and throws it away. They throw it away, and Gunn's got it. And she'll kind of wait everybody to get to that front court. And that's where they'll set the offense up here in our fourth quarter. Lob it down inside, take to the glass, step through, move, scoop shot, Ooh. no good. And here come the Eagles back the other way. They're going to run with it. Two-on-one situation. Stop, pop, shot, rolls around, good. She's got it. As number 31 is Mariah San Sanchez Pounce. Ponce, excuse me. And she's only a sophomore, yeah, really. I like her. She wow. wants the ball. I've yeah. really been impressed by that. Young sophomore playing extremely well here. 52-48, Eagles in front. Arizona Christians will reset, get it to Till. She'll take the 15-footer, and it's good. 
Nail that one. The back-to-back -back shots from the inside the key by Arizona Christian is really important. That's key. Yeah, the battle for the rebound here. And I think you're right. I mean, you really just got to be ready at all times. Take to the glasses yeah. up and in. Nice take there. Six unanswered points. Big run right now. Alvarez with the glass. And we're tied again. I'm sure it says somewhere. I just don't have it in front of me. And we have been tied a lot. We got lots of paper. It's got to be somewhere. <laughs> That's right. I have half a tree over here, for God's sake. <laughs> Here's a turnaround, and that's going to be tipped out of bounds. Till got a hand on it as Ponce tried the shot. Early in the game, but Carroll's up 34-17, so they got him doubled up over there. Nice, yes. Carroll's a tough team, don't get me wrong, and they're always very competitive. But so are we. <laughs> that's right. That's, <laughs> that's what right. I'm saying. We just... <laughs> <coughs> Here's a drive to the glass, spin move, shot nice. is good. Nice take there. Julia's a tough player. Yeah, she is. They've got her listed at 5-4, and I think they're fibbing a little bit with that one. Yeah. What was that uh, show, The Fish in Pittsburgh? Or oh, yeah. No okay. higher than a knee. You know, yeah. how, how low can <laughs> you go no higher than a knee? Yeah. That's where she is. She keeps it right down there low exactly. when she dribbles. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Boy, that is age right there. <laughs> <laughs> nice pass. Till puts it over to the right-hand side and gets it right into Payne's hands where she puts it in. Well, that was a nice pass. Yeah. Really drew the defense to her. Till and Payne really right now are dominating the key for Arizona Christian. Here's a three on the right wing. That's in and out. Oh, then back in wow. again. Good shot, Woodruff. The 5'5 graduate. From Branch, Georgia. You see how many graduates they got on this <laughs> they team? Do have. Here's a three at the other end. That shot no good. Eagles are going to run with it. They are going to attack the glass. If they can catch up to the ball, they do. Here's a hard foul. And they'll huh. just clear out of there. Yeah, she not going to even argue that one. That was a pretty. Till knew she did it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's her third. Now, the interesting thing, when you watch women play, they go, okay, foul, and you walk away. Guys, we had to be pushing each other. That's right, that's right. You got to. <laughs> I'm not taking that. You got to punch a little bit, and then, yeah. Yeah. And girls, they just walk away. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so we go to the free throw line. Shot is off the iron. It's no good. One of the departments are going to have to work on. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, as that shot is off, Gibson will get it again. I hope uh, somebody from Georgia invites me to come and see him. I'd like to go to Georgia. My wife has been to Atlanta. I like I've, Atlanta. I've gone through. I didn't yeah. have a chance to stay. I mean, big city. I like it as much as I like any big city, but yeah. I've always had a great time there. If you're in Georgia, give us a text message, 406-450-1147. Love to hear from you, 406-450-1147. Here's a take to the glass. That's going to be a foul as Alvarez will go to the free throw line. You know, I don't, I don't mind this. Alvarez took that last three and then that drive to the key. That's great, but what's working for him now is passing the ball and post touches. I think they need to stick with that game plan. Now, I think you're right. I mean, it's, it's something they can do. We've seen them do it, but they are trying to be a little more creative. As the free throw is good there from Alvarez. Scottsdale, Arizona went to... Uh, where did she go? Um, Horizon High School. There it is. And second shot is good. You know, I was going to say is, uh, boy, that COVID year is going to have to come to an end eventually. Eventually, yeah. You know, everybody was six years or five years yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I just uh -huh. really like to get back to college basketball because you think you look at it and the record books have just got thrown out the window now. Oh, completely. Because you have an all, all elite athlete that got seven years of eligibility. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a travel there as Sanchez didn't know what to do with it. And referee passed the ball to the player over here. She was looking up here to see what we were doing. <laughs> Alvarez says, hi, Sarge. <laughs> Clark is back into the game. I didn't quite realize she'd been on the bench for quite a long time. Yeah. That shot is no good. And they... Volleyball it around for a little bit before the Eagles get it into the hands of Woodruff, uh, Woodruff who hesitates, glass attack, and missed it. Till's got the rebound, and here comes the firestorm once again as Alvarez keeps her head up, keeps it going from out of bounds, tack to the glass, and 
It's not pretty. No, no, <laughs> they're, they're getting out of their game plan here. This is getting a little ugly. The coach should really call timeout and get them settled down. It's only a two-point game, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was because they got back in it with that 6-0 run, but yeah. now they haven't scored forever. I agree, and uh, so now they're coming back the other way with the basketball down inside. And couldn't quite get that shot to go. Well, they'll run with it down the other way. Firestorm will put there the shot up, and they do get it to go. Yeah, that's it. Payne knocks that one down. Taking it straight to the basket, putting it straight up, nothing flashy. Guess what, we're tied again. 58-58. Overtime game. Hey, don't hit me in the mouth like that. 58-58. <laughs> Isn't it great? 5.05 to go. Not it up. Here comes a dribble drive. Fade away shot, no good. And Alvarez is going to run, try to get ahead of the pack. Takes it to the glass, fouled hard, and will go to the free throw line. Yeah, tough position. Ty Williams only a 5'6". Alvarez has her by a good six inches. She had to do something to stop that one. And timeout is going to be called. It's under five minutes, so that means it's a 60. We'll take a break. We're back with more. Tied at 58 right here from the University of Providence Argo Sports Network. When you're craving the best burgers, fries, beers, and milkshakes, Street Burgers is where you need to be. And if it's your birthday, well, do they have a treat for you. A free birthday shake. Just sign up for their rewards program and get a free birthday shake during your birthday month. You'll also get 50 points just for signing up. So get over to streetburgers.net to sign up or stop in and see them today. And don't forget, it's always free local delivery of food and beer. And when you get their Montana-sourced, made-with-love burgers, fries, and shakes, you're sure to have a happy belly. Montana. We are lucky to call it home. Discovery and adventures are around every corner of our state. The vibe is different here. When looking for a local homegrown Montana bank, look no further. Stockman Bank, Montana's brand of banking. Stockman Bank, great supporters of ours here at the University of Providence. As a matter of fact, when you come and watch soccer next year, you'll see our brand new scoreboard out there. And uh, they are huge sponsors of that. And we appreciate those guys very much for being on board with us. We do like all of our sponsors. Special sponsors for this NAIA tournament include Benefits Orthopedic Center of Montana. Thank you to the Stadium Sports Bar and Casino. Our good friends at Northwestern Energy. They're keeping us a brighter future coming our way. And thank you to Street Burger. You want to have a great meal, go over there and say hi to the folks at Street Burger. Matter of fact, that's what I need after this game. I need a big old juicy hamburger. Well, it's so nice for me. It's walking distance from my office. So, I, oh, gosh, Street Burger yeah. sounds pretty good. And, of course, our good friends at McDonald's, three locations here in Great Falls. And uh, Coach Bill always takes care of us. And, uh, we were in Germany one time, and they have McRibs year-round. Oh, so, that's yeah. just unfair. So, Coach Bill and I go to the line. Neither one of us have any money. We have to, we have to borrow money from Aaron Legal. <laughs> Aaron's always good for us. Yeah, yeah she was a, a college kid at the time playing for Coach Bill. And, yeah, so way back when, so. Well, here comes a dribble drive. Last four minutes is going to get real interesting here. Here's a shot out there. No good. Rebound battle for and thrown to the ground. Yeah, a foul's going to be yeah, called here. Got, what? I didn't push <laughs> yeah. her with both hands. Yeah. I only pushed her with one. Roval got her and pushed her from behind. Payne doing a nice job defensively against Ponce. Really, Ponce has not contributed a ton since coming off the bench with foul trouble. Roval gets her second foul, second of the quarter. With four minutes to go, and very undecided as of yet. As we talked a lot about zone in that last game, we didn't see that, but nope. now I see that the Firestorm are going to the zone. Oh, back to back fouls. Moon takes it to the glass. And it's a cliche, but I'm going to say it amongst the Giants at 5 3. Yeah, that's it exactly. <laughs> but Roy Ball flicking up uh, back to back fouls, and that's now her third. Woodruff will check yeah. back into the contest. Ooh, very undersized squad out there right now for Reinhardt. Also coming in is going to be Williams again. We go to the free throw line, 4.05 to go. 
Firestorm trying to hold on to the lead. Eagles trying to tie the lead. And do not on that. Free throw percentages have not been good no. <laughs> for the no. Eagles. Second shot is up, and that one also no good. And here comes the Firestorm back the other way. As they'll fire it in underneath. Alvarez trying to get it yeah. down into the baseline, and they're going to pick up a foul. Yeah, tough part. Again, Williams has just got a tough matchup. She's given up good five, six inches, yeah. trying to play post defense. That is just tough. Looks like going to the sidelines is Williams, and Gibson will come back in for this Eagles team. And Firestorm, oh, look at that dip move. Didn't quite get a high enough push on the ball from Gunn. But the Eagles do get the rebound. And Preston coming back to the right wing. Left top of the key there with 19 to go on the shot clock. A lot of scoring in this second half. It's actually slowed down quite a little. As a move to the basket is picked up defensively. Drive, Eagles, four shot, ugly shot. And rebounded, taken care of by Arizona Christian. They'll come down the other way. And again, Payne, she's not making points, but she is doing a ton out there this second half. And the Firestorm holding on to that one point lead. Been scoreless for a while. Now we're going to go to the free throw line. To the charity stripe we go. He looks like a rusty, doesn't he? Yeah. He's, yeah. Very apt name. Yep. From Chicago, told oh, me. Oh, really? Yeah, been over in Chicago. And uh, I think he told me he'd been around the game for 40 years. Wow. Quite did a the, while. Did the job take him down to Arizona? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, said he could be retired, but he wants to be part of the... Uh, Young generation. Yeah, I hear you know, that. That's you, why I like this broadcasting. Yeah. You get to be involved. You stay with it. That was a big thing with broadcasting, officiating. Yep. Um, it's interesting because as I look back on my career at basketball, I've done everything you can possibly do. Really? We've won state championships. I've coached on the sidelines. Never a state champion. I didn't coach at that level. But I've cleaned the backboards to sweep the floor, to set it up, to referee, a referee state tournaments, championships. I've never done the book. Uh, that's the toughest thing. Yeah, the the book or that clock? Yep, I've never done that. There's a take to the glass, and that was a nice little set through there from Ponce. Yeah, I ran in the double A. Randy Bogdan and I were the first ones to broadcast, and then uh, we had a chance to do the book and the, the timing. Oh, my God, that's the most oh, nerve-wracking yeah. thing you can do. Yeah. I said there, I kept wearing out that button, <laughs> touching it. Is it on? Is it running? <laughs> it was crazy. Whoa. Oh, she's tough. 60-60, 227 to go. Block there, nice block underneath. And then here's a steal. Alvarez from three, got it. Oh, that's a big one. She made one. She was getting me frustrated taking too many threes, but then she puts down the big one. Yeah, she drained that one from outside. That gives Arizona Christian a three. Let's go back the other way. Can we tie it? No. Rebounded, taken care of by the Eagles, up and in. Guess who that was? Pumps. Again with yeah. a basket. I said she was quiet. Payne was keeping her under control, but now she's starting to open it up. She's got 15, 15 right now. There you yeah. go. I think she only <laughs> had seven at half, so. Shelby's laughing at me because I couldn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like bowling in there. Pins are falling everywhere. But it's a charge. <laughs> Preston <laughs> taking this one for Reinhardt. Now we're going to yeah. have a conversation. Oh, making sure they saw who yep. ran her over. Yeah, want to make sure yeah. the right one, yep. And Gunn, she is a physical, physical player inside. She does not shy away from contact. She reminds me of one of the running backs that runs towards the linebacker rather yeah. than trying to dodge him. Yeah, just soon hits you as it go around you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One point contest. We're down to crunch time with a minute 35 to go. And unforced turnover there. And here they come. Alvarez off the glass. She could not get it to go. Rebounded, fought for, her, and Arizona Christians will pull it back out with a one-point lead and 15 seconds to go on the shot clock. As here comes the firestorm. They're holding it, a tackle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I was watching the fight over there <laughs> yeah. with Gunn Alvarez. and Alvarez yeah. and literally just tackled her. The pistol says, well, I don't think we can have that happen. <laughs> Oh, that was pretty well, obvious. What you say one. about Scrappy? That's yeah, Scrappy. Yeah, they are Scrappy. So Alvarez, Alyssa will take the shot here. Her shot is in and out, no good. Missed that one. One point contest, man. Back and forth. Here's the shot coming up. Ooh, crowd got a little quiet. Yeah, really. <laughs> They fight for the rebound, and a jump ball will favor. It looks like we're going to go to the eagle side of the floor. Gibson's funny. She has to discuss everything with the officials for at least a second or two afterwards. Yes. She's always courteous and nice, but she's got to make sure she gets good clarification on every call. I just got three text messages. Hello from Georgia. Hey! Wonderful. Hello, Georgia. Hey, Georgia. Hope you enjoy the broadcast. We apologize for the technical stuff, but we're good to go now. So here we go. One point game. Eagles on the attack. They trying to throw it underneath. Head and shoulder fake. Shot nice up. Nice take. take. Yeah. Nice take from Gibson. Yeah. But we swap back and forth with under a minute to go now. Now that's a third player in double figures. Each team has plenty of timeouts left. Three for the Eagles, four for the Firestorm. Here comes Alvarez with the dribble drive, takes it to the glass, forces the shot, missed it. They get the rebound, hard push underneath, no call. They reset back out with 35 seconds to go. 64-63, here's the shot, rolls around. No, couldn't get it to go. They battle for the boards. They're crawling on the ground, and it finally goes out of bounds. The official says oh. we're going to go towards the Eagles with a timeout call. Don't leave us because it's only 28 seconds and we're going to stay right here. We don't want to miss this. Man, are they fighting. Yeah, good call there. Three opportunities to score. Uh, you know, great. The first one by Alvarez may be a little forced, but other than that, they had some good looks, some good shots. I can see their frustration with not getting one to drop. The big good decision now is what are they going to do defensively because the last time we saw the ball come in for the Eagles, they let it roll all the way to midcourt. Yeah. And so... They can't allow that to happen. Yeah, we're 28 seconds to go. And it's a one-point contest. The Eagles do lead it. There is going to be free throws if they have to foul because the Firestorm will be in their fifth. They have four right now. So do you try to get the steal or oh, do yeah. you have to I do would, you foul if here? If I was coaching, I was denied to defense. Trying to, I wouldn't guard the inbounds. I'd double team out here and try to get the steal. Here's the inbounds pass. They do get it inbounds. As they come in, a foul will be called here. Well, that's not who you want to foul. Ponce will be the one will go to the free throw line. A chance to shoot two. That is the fifth team foul with 25 seconds to go. And how big is that three-point line yeah. time and time again? Yep, exactly. So they will get a substitution here. Till will go to the sidelines. And checking in here is going to be Robel. Yep. Offensive, defensive switch, putting in some more speed out there. Mariah Sanchez Ponce, the sophomore, will go to the free throw line. Up by one, 64-63 with 25.7 seconds to go. At the charity stripe, as she takes her time, shoots this one and oh, misses it. Oh, there we go. Misses it. I don't have it in front of me what the free throw percentage is, but they have not shot well from that charity stripe. Second shot My coming up here. Stat crew, I got to get moving. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the shot. That one rolls around. She does get that one. It makes it a two-point contest. Yeah, 28% they've shot. They will call timeout. Let's take a break. We'll take a look at the stats and tell you all about it after this timeout. 65-63 with 25 seconds to go. We're back in just a moment from the University of Providence Argo Sports Network. <laughs>
Coach Kelly, here we go. Yeah, I tell you what, 25 seconds. It's interesting, you look through these stats and you're kind of astonished we're still sitting this close, but two-point game, here we go. They bring it on the inbounds. It is going to be the Firestorm trying to get it inbounds. They do. They're down by two, 24 to go. As they back it back out here, trying to get an opening. Here's a take to the glass. Alvarez is going to crash. No call. The ball stays alive here. They get it in the hands of Gunn. Gunn tries to force the shot, missed it. Ten seconds to go. Shot is up, blocked underneath. It's six seconds to go. Timeout is going to be called. Interesting. They, they relied more on the dribble drive to the basket than passing the ball. Tough position for Arizona Christian right now. The call for the timeout happened so quick, and Jeff called it right away, and I think what he was thinking was, we've got the ball. If we call timeout here, one, they clear everything from right. the slapping and all that, but they also get to move it to the front That's court it. now. Yeah. yeah, see, and I wouldn't have. I, you had six seconds left. You figured you would have run off another three probably before they fouled you, but in that instant point, yeah. that you got to make a decision. you got to go with your gut. I stack everybody in the front court, and then I throw it to the back court and, and uh, make run them around. chase me back run there. Around. Yeah, keep let, away. Let it run out. Yeah, so. it used to be my kids' favorite practice when we had to practice those scenarios. Yeah, because it makes you think a little yeah. bit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to practice. Yeah, yeah. If you're trying to teach it to them in a timeout, you're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's see what happens. Six point three to go here. Eagles have the ball. They're up a couple. They do go to the back court. Almost a steal there. They haven't fouled. Now they do, and. That was a brilliant call, Coach Sarge. You just, you, you said <laughs> yeah, that. You yeah. said that's exactly what they're going to do. Well, and, and the reason is, is uh, even though we know they have 10 seconds now, dribble around, chase me. Yes, that's They it. have to foul. Yeah. Now, here's the thing I don't understand, and, and I understand the game of basketball, but that's not an intentional foul. She's in the air, and I get it. Yeah, I mean, the, the moment yeah. and, and what yeah. it all handles with. They're going to yeah. really let it go unless it's sure. a blatant grab the body. Ooh, free throw missed again. At the charity stripe there is uh, Woodrow. And no official wants a game to be called, on, you know, dictated sure. on one of their calls, so. Two-point game, seconds to go. This shot is up and missed oh. that one as well. And it goes out of bounds. They'll go down the other way. Do they call timeout here? I think they would, and they do. And that's an interesting rule to be able to advance it like that. Excuse yes, me. that is it. When you said that, I had to go through my memory banks a little bit, but you're right on the advancing, because in high school, you got to dribble the ball down there to get that advancement. Yeah. Yeah, and this way they call the timeout, and then they advance it to the hash mark, which is probably the only reason they have those hash marks over there anymore. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I recall back in the day, you used to have to drive down. You couldn't stall. You had to go down and pass those hash marks, and then you could come back out. Exactly. You couldn't stall. And I can't remember what the count was, 15 seconds or whatever and so. But uh, then, of course, they added the shot clock this year in high school, which I like. I, I was always in favor of that. Well, 1.1, stranger things have happened. A quick two, or do you shoot the three? You shoot the three. In one second, technically, it's a catch and shoot. You can't dribble. You can't do anything. Alvarez will probably be involved in the play here. They don't have the bodies for a lob. They look for it. Alvarez breaks free. They try to get it inbounds. They do, and it's tipped out of bounds again. With point seven, you can still catch and shoot. I think Coach That's was frustrated. They didn't run what he wanted them to no. run. No, they didn't. Yeah, he wanted to get him inside because I see in the back Bain. there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bain was there. Yep, exactly. yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were there and didn't quite get it to him. They are going to go to the instant replay here, as you see him down here, and they want to make sure that the clock started and stopped on the right time. In the old days, I think it was uh, a second. You had like a half a second human error margin. Oh, really? Yeah, and I think that was actually in the rule book with that. So, yeah. But now these, all these new clocks were down to tenths of a second. Yeah. The teams have come out, but they're looking at the clock. Now, we'll see if they go over. There's a microphone set up for them on the far sidelines to explain what they're looking at. And we'll see if they use it or not. And that was one of the things that we had talked to with the officials about informing us what is going on. Right. And they are going to come over. It doesn't look like they're putting any time back on the clock. And I don't know that they're going to tell us or not. I think 
Coach Jeff is out of the coaching's box. I don't know. Oh, he's just asking the ref what he's going to have for dinner <laughs> afterwards. So they will not use the microphone, which we asked him to do to tell us what was going on. That's not going to happen. And I guess they're going to leave the clock at the same time, and they will. Jeff will call a timeout. And so I think they're leaving it at point seven. I'm uh, pretty sure with another 30-second timeout, so we don't want to go anywhere. We do want to remind you, tomorrow, 5 o'clock, we will be here. Uh, Chris and I will bring you all the action. I think things have settled down, and uh, we've worked out the bugs. Uh, again, I apologize. I have no idea what happened. But uh, we are running. We'll be here at 5 o'clock for that championship. They'll introduce everybody and uh, thank everybody for coming in. And it's a huge thing to make it to the national tournament. The winner of that game tomorrow will advance on to the Sweet 16 in Iowa. That's where they will head. And it uh, should be a lot of fun. So point seven to go. It is a catch and shoot, as you said. If you hit the three, you win. If you hit a two, we go to overtime. Inbounds pass. They look for somebody to break open. Down in the corner. Catch. Shot is oh. a foul is called. There's a foul called Whoa. on the baseline. These are huge free throws. Oh, wow. wow. These are huge free throws, but they're going to check the clock and see if it expired before the shot. Yeah, they'll clear the court because technically it's double zeros on the clock. But was it out of her hand or did the, the buzzer go before the foul? I think that's probably what they're asking. How big is this replay wow. right now? You do not see this very often. I mentioned earlier, no official doesn't want to ever dictate a game. They want to call it fair. They want to call it clean. But that was right in front of that baseline official. So he absolutely saw something. <laughs> And, and, and neither coach yeah. is squealing about it. So Gunson at the free throw line, she says, give me the ball. I'm going to yeah. tie this thing, man. Yeah. She's got a chance to shoot two here with no time on the clock. She has to hit them both. Lauren Gunn, the 5'7 sophomore from Saginaw. Officials. I just wanted to say Saginaw. Saginaw, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how my belly is. It's sagging all the time. Saginaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great game. Back and forth. It says gone. They really tried to get it into the hands of Alvarez, and uh, they just couldn't get an opening. And then a uh, nice uh, shot down as Lauren got open. She went up and under the defender and forced the shot, and that is where she got fouled. Ike will come over and take a look and see what his decision is. Now, they got Moon's number. No, Simpson. Okay. They got yeah. Simpson up there. I was going to say Moon wasn't even Kiara, in the game. Yeah. So. Yeah. Simpson is going to be called with her third foul, but really doesn't matter at this point unless we go to overtime. You dream about this. Yeah, Remember you Remember growing up? Oh, yeah. always, always. You got a chance to go to the national tournament. You're on the free throw line, down yeah. two. Yeah. yeah. In fact, yeah. my first game in college, yeah. I, I had to go to the free throw line. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, that's that AD, not a coach. He's coming out here. He wants in on the conversation. <laughs> The boys are talking about it. <laughs> we'll see what they say. Uh, and they're heading over to the microphone here. doing lots of gesturing. They're talking to Bob, yeah. so they'll probably have him yeah. announce it on the PA. Yeah, they got the mic. Okay. But they did call the yeah, foul. they did. And they put time back on two, the clock. Point two seconds. Point two. Huge free throws right here. So here comes the free throws. Shut the music off. As we go to the free throw line, Lauren Gunn, a chance to tie at the charity stripe. First shot is no oh, good. Oh, what a shame. But with two or for point two on there, you could tap it in. Yes, you can. You could tap it in. You can't grab and shoot, but you could tap it in with a timeout here. And they, had they have Till and Payne both, and they're much taller than any of the Eagle players. Wow. Time and time again, championships are won at the free throw line, and uh, that was a miss right there. And they didn't make that one. But again, you can tap it in with .2 seconds to go. Um, it's not impossible. No, not you know? at all. Not at all. So what happens 
if she makes it. Do you want to miss it, I assume? Yeah, you've got to. you got to miss you it. you got to miss it and go for the tip in. Yeah. And that's all you can do is tip it in. And it's really mathematically, you should have point three seconds for a tip in, but yeah. it can work. Yeah, you could get it in there, but. Uh, well, no, this should be fine because the clock won't start until they touch until it. Until they tip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're fine. Yeah, I almost think you want to miss it high and off the back of the irons. So it bounces high, and then you have to jump over somebody to tip it in. And then the Eagles brought in their three big players. They got Gibson, Ponce. So here comes a shot as Gunn at the free throw line. Would like to miss this one high off the glass, and she makes oh, it. she was. <laughs> Poor girl. She banked it in, yeah. and that is going to be it. She wanted to miss it, but she couldn't. Yeah. And it's going to be a one-point victory for the Eagles. Eagles win it 65-64 in a thriller here in our second game. It'll be an interesting matchup tomorrow. We look forward to it as the Eagles from Reinhardt will battle it out with the University of Providence at 5 o'clock. As we wrap it up here, Chris has got to go and get the interviews uh, after post-game interviews, and we'll have all that coverage for you tomorrow. But that is in the books in a thriller down the stretch as the University of Providence will battle it out against the Eagles from Reinhardt tomorrow at 5 o'clock as it is Reinhardt picking up the victory in this one. Thank you so much for Chris Kelly. I'm Jim Sargent.